Hello friends, okay, let's dive right in. Here's my blue ombre wall. I did a few things differently than my green ombre wall, which is in another YouTube video. Here I am, you'll see I did a little bit more prep, and of course I had to include Nico and him falling off the ladder. Uh, this time I taped around my bottom trim more, and I went in with the over the tape with the handle of actually a paint can opener, one of those keys. The handle is rounded, which helped really push that tape into the trim so it didn't cause any bleeding. So here I am, I still like the texture of the painted on or uh, using a paintbrush instead of a roller. So I'll use that technique throughout. Something I did pick up is you'll see here I'm edging or I'm smoothing out the edges of the paint with a wet rag that helps with the blending down the road. And so that's the light blue stripe done there. Okay, now I'm going into my medium blue stripe. With a convex corner, <clears throat> where, excuse me, where the corner is pointing outwards, I find it easier to go around to the other side and paint towards myself. That way I don't get as much paint on the other wall where you don't want the paint. A little touch up is always required, but that definitely helps me go a lot faster without having to pause or clean up as much afterwards. So that's what I'm doing here. And again, I'm gonna smooth out those edges with the rag because that does help with the blending once I get all my stripes painted on. Okay, and here you'll see I am wetting that rag down. That is the main thing, is you wanna keep that paint wet and having a damp rag and a damp brush help with that, and that helps with the blending as well. If you see me look over or laugh at something in these videos, I am watching Critical Role on YouTube the entire time I'm painting these walls. So I am getting some entertainment while this is all being done. And here is the medium blue stripe done. You can see I don't really care about the edges or how thick the stripe is. Anything that's a bit uneven, I will fix in the blending step of everything. And trimming around the steps and the molding here did take me a little while. You'll see later on in the video, I did go back and tape off those corners, uh, just blending it out because I do use a roller, a rag, and a brush for blending. It's really impossible to not get it on the other wall. So I did go back and tape it off where you know, you can edge a little bit more easily with just a brush. It's not going to work with a, when you use all of your different tools for blending. And here I'm just trying to make sure I get a nice thick coat over everything so you don't see any thin spots. And last but not least, my dark, dark gray. That is actually gray and not black. And I'm here, I'm just hoping that my taping method worked and I don't have to deal with a lot of bleed through. Uh, spoiler alert, it, uh, it worked. It was very nice. So those are my four stripes all done. And here's some real time video for you guys. And all my TikToks, my videos are sped up actually 900%. And all the sped up clips in this video are sped up 500%. So this is actually real time. It's a lot slower. And I did try the foam roller on this ombre wall. A lot of people mentioned that in my first TikTok to use a foam roller or a sponge. I didn't have a sponge, but I did have these four inch rollers on hand. So here we're sped back up to 500%. Uh, it does take a lot longer. Each stripe takes about 20, 30 minutes and blending takes a while because I'm just going with the flow. I am seeing what works, what doesn't, and I'm having to work around everything. So I was talking about some thin spots and you can kind of see that on the top left of the dark blue stripe right there in this clip. I was trying to cover it up and it just kept wiping away. So when that happens, I recommend just moving on and going back maybe 20 minutes later, you can see blend wipes, wipe the paint right away. So it wasn't working there. So I just move on. I'm letting the first thin coat of paint dry and I'll go back over it and fill it in a little bit further down the road. And the blending may have been smoother if I had a longer foam roller, but like I said, 
we really liked the choppiness to make it kind of look like a choppy sea, a storm. I was going for that particular look. So here I am adding some more paint to help me blend it out. Another technique I used sometimes is I actually moved my brush sideways and you can see to paint along. I don't know, it just created nicer lines in some sections. And here's another real time of how slow I'm wiping everything down, how slow I'm blending. And I'm really getting into the corner here and this is the blending stripe that made me realize I needed to tape up the other walls because it was getting all over that other wall where I did not want paint. I have a bit of real-time commentary in this next clip of what was going on while I was painting. Okay, my husband's gonna be home in two hours and this is what I have done. I'm trying to finish before he gets home from work again. And I'm gonna need to touch up some of that uh, corner right up there. This is our stormy sea wall. I had a few people ask how I got my paint onto my roller. It's a little bit hard to see because I wasn't focusing on that while I was filming, but if you look down at my feet, you can see a normal 12 inch uh, roller pan. And I just poured a little bit of each color into the base there and carefully rolled my paint out so that each color was about halfway onto the foam roller. On the ladder there, the red cup is actually just holding plain water, no paint, and I'll keep dipping my rag into it on a regular basis just to keep it moist because that will help with the blending. And again, this is some real-time video, not sped up. It's It does take a minute to get everything on the wall and blended together to make sure and to make sure you have no thin spots. Here's some sped up close up for you guys. You can see the roller does create streaks, but not a problem. We're just going to grab that wet rag and wipe those away and use that extra paint to help blend in everything together. I never really tried to blend too much with the roller or the brush. Those were more of aids to get the paint on the wall in a way I wanted it. Like if I wanted to bring the dark blue up, I'd add dark blue paint. And this time around, I also stopped dipping my brushes into both paints. I had one brush for each color, whereas last time I dip a singular brush into two different colors. So I think that also helped me get more of the, the stormy sea look. And again, I did forget or lose or delete the blending of the black and the dark blue. And I wish I'd, I hadn't done that because that was harder to do. Uh, it's hard to see those colors. It's hard when they're wet and you're close up on that wall. It's difficult to see where everything is. And this is some real time. You can see I'm just kind of walking around. I'm looking at everything. I step back several times and try to analyze the wall as a whole and see where needs uh, more work, more paint, more blending. And then I've also included my husband's reaction again in this video. Hey, I'm feeling my reaction. Wow. Is it good? It's good. It's good. It's good. Ah, oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Yeah? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just exhausted. I can't get so exuberant. <laughs> no. Mm. I'm also wet with sweat. Gross. And here we are again, friends. The wall is done. I did go back and paint that outlet about a week later. And there's Nico. And here it is. I hope this helped and feel free to come back or ask any more questions. I am new to this whole YouTube video thing. So bear with me while I get all the edits figured out 
and feel free to drop a comment and subscribe and help me keep doing this and let's learn together. Thank you guys.